second half of football. Melbourne 73, Swans 42. 31 points the margin. Can the Swans come back as O'Dwyer wins the tap? Holden comes through, couldn't quite get the ball clear. Umpire Cameron got in the way of Bolton. Bolton was tackled, loses it. Picked up by Holden who drives the ball back in towards the centre. Coleman taps the ball down. Lovett leads in the race for the ball. Sean White winning support. Lovett kicks it off the ground. Over the boundary line on the full it goes. A free kick to go the way of the Sydney Swans. Well, if the Sydney Swans have got any uh, pride at all, uh, Bob, they will come back hard in this quarter. They're kicking to the scoring end. Unfortunately, the rain is starting to drizzle down again. Certainly, they're kicking the ball a little bit further at the end that the Swans are kicking to. There's almost a marked way to eye. Grabbed by Spalding, who's been a tremendous player. He's had a great final series. Spalding over to Yates. Yates to Flower. And Robbie Flower takes a great mark. And I don't like this move of Carter on the half-back flank. Who well, would you put on Flower? Well, I would certainly put, I'd put Carroll up there on the half-back flank in his rightful He's position and try Cordy down the forward line. Carroll's too loose for Flower. Well, anyway, I don't agree. think Carter is a key position player. There's a couple being thrown there. I reckon. And I think the Swans will come back hard. And that and might the be... big Irishman's having a few words, Jim Steins. <laughs> Oh, gee, uh, Jared Healy's having plenty to say, too. There's a bit of feeling out there. I think the Swans are going to really serve it up in this quarter to Melbourne. Well, they need to do something because Melbourne have taken them apart in the second quarter when they kicked eight goals, nine to three goals, three. And the Demons, well, Demon by name, and that's the way they've played. They really have, as Stevie Wright must get the free kick. Stein's in the way, so a 15-metre penalty. Stevie Wright, short of half back. Drives it towards centre wing. Coleman up with O'Dwyer. Neither player can take it. A ridiculous piece of football by Coleman. The advantage rule allowed. On goes Spalding. Ironmonger punches it away, but a free kick has been found, and Cordy will take the kick. There's a lot of free kicks being given as Cordy gives it across to Tui. Tui wide, but Melbourne too quick and too good. Oh, gee, stretch over, ran that one, though, and luck's a fortune because Mitchell was five metres behind. He's got it, though, Barry Mitchell at centre wing. He kicks it long. He's looking for Carroll over the back. And punching the ball away was Spalding, and they've been badly beaten up forward, the Swans, by that strong Melbourne defence. Coleman is playing at centre-half forward. I'd be tempted to have him off the ground and uh, have the smaller player in Hawk on the ground for a bit of mobility. The rain is still coming down. Conditions just that little bit slippery. will favour the smaller players. His eye shoulder has done well on Greg Williamson's coming on the ground. Over to stretch. Stretch to half forward. Some strong work going on. Browning. Charges after it against Viney. Browning's got it, hand passes it straight over his head and over the line on the true centre wing position. And there's a good close-up shot of the crowd who are loving this exhibition by Melbourne. Three minutes gone, John Northey has done a magnificent job this year. 10-13 to 6-6 and now a free kick to big John Ironmonger who has battled hard today in the ruck. Hasn't had many kicks, but it certainly has been contesting well. Ironmonger's handball accepted by Browning, who put a shocking kick forward. And Spalding, who is taking Coleman apart. Why Hawk is off the ground, I do not know in these conditions. Rain coming down, the mobility of Hawk compared to Coleman. Well, I don't think there's any comparison. Chewy, tackled, well tackled, but got boot to ball. Straight to the opposition, though, and that's created by the tackle of Ricky Jackson. Stretch. No opponent at all. Drives them all long up to the forward zone. Steins can't take the mark. The Swans under real pressure as the loose ball comes to Campbell. Campbell a snap towards goal. One point the result. Well, that's lux of fortune for the Swans there. That would have really put the nail in the coffin. 10-14 to 6-6. They want goals and they want them very, very quickly in the rain. Coming down a little bit more heavily now. Worried looking Tom Hapey, but he's still, even though it's uh, pretty cold here, he's still got that T-shirt on, Tommy. Centre half back and getting very dark here at the MCG as Big O to Wire picks it up. The rain tumbling down. Here come the Demons again, and a mark has been taken about 35 metres out from goal by Warren Dean. And as I said, it's getting very dark and wet. That was eye shoulder, hurry kick on the left foot. And they're in front all the time, those Melbourne forwards. He's had six kicks. 
And Warren Dean is yet to score a goal, but there it is. It's a goal. Lovely goal to Warren Dean. 11 14 80 as we watch the replay. And beautiful smothering. Eyeshold, who's done a superb job since coming on. 42 to 80. 38 points the margin. Thirty-eight points, the gap between the sides as O'Dwyer again wins the tap. Browning leads in the race for the ball. Try to kick it off the ground, tackles Viney too high. Viney breaks the one tackle, then another, but runs into trouble and he's penalised accordingly as the Swans. Oh, stupid play, Ironmonger. Stupid play. That is just giving the game away. Particularly when you've got possession of the ball. Simon Eich done a fine job for Melbourne puts it forward, thumped away by the defence, Roberts takes it, drives it out towards the half back flank Browning first on the scene, a little short kick up towards the centre wing, Brett Scott couldn't handle it, could have been a free kick to Melbourne but not needed as Todd Viney picks it up, back towards half forward, the kick's over the boundary line and it'll be a free kick to the Swans and I think the last thing that the Swans wanted was rain I think uh, they wanted it fine and to have any chance of coming back it'll be very difficult under these slippery conditions Bob yes I'll go along with that Pete but the way Melbourne are, are approaching the ball and attacking it I don't think it would matter whether it was wet dry or otherwise you could play it in a swamp and I reckon that uh, Melbourne would be on top the way they were approaching their gun Holden up high was Spalding, couldn't take the mark. He gets good support from Lovett, who was held when not in possession of the ball. And Brett Lovett, no better player on the ground for mine. Well, he was discarded by Hawthorne, is that right? Captain of the Hawthorne under-19s. He was. Lovett puts it towards half forward. No mark. Campbell over the top, tapped back by Browning. Holden comes in, gathers it well, hooks it over the shoulder. Dangerous probably because it comes to Healy. Healy goes Garwood. Offline, one point the result. Here's goal up by Kevin Andrews, signaling that point. 11-15, you can see by the scoring shots, 26-12. to 12. Well, that's how dominant Melbourne have been. A great performance this by Melbourne again. And uh, the Melbourne football public getting right behind the Demons and... Uh, plenty of supporters who aren't really normally Melbourne supporters here too. There's Lovett who's been such a good player and so is Spalding. He is thrashing Glenn Coleman. Now, let's see what Browning can do. A magnificent pass finds Tony Morwood. Morwood wide to Murphy who's been quiet. Murphy kicks a very high one offline and through for one point. The Swans badly want goals. There's David Murphy. He's had a pretty quiet day. 11-15 to 6-7. Admittedly, he's coming back from injury. First quarter has been going nearly eight and a half minutes. The third quarter, I should say, eight and a half minutes. Danny Hughes, geez, a reliable player. A beautiful long kick, too. Up goes Coleman. Misjudged that one badly. Oh, beautiful tap on. That's excellent play to Stephen Stretch. He runs to half forward and kicks long. A beautiful long kick. Goal! What a great goal to Stretch. Beautiful goal, and what a glorious tap on it was to allow Stretch to... Set up that piece of play. Over the, top, over the top was superb as we watch on replay. Coleman up. Up they come. And Todd Viney up high to put the ball over the top. And the combination of the South Australians. Stretch from West Corrins. The boy from Sturt, Todd Viney, getting the ball to him. And the Melbourne are running hot. 44 points the margin. 13 kicks, no handballs, but that is not. As we see, the light towers, and it might not look too dark, but there, there is rain still falling here at the MCG. The lights are on, actually, Bob. Ironmonger trying to tap the ball on. Healy kicking it out of Healy's hands, and it's a free kick to Mitchell. Brother against brother down there. Gerard and Greg. Greg. Greg Healy, who turns 20, 
uh, two, I think it is, this week. Murphy carried over the line. And the desperation of the Melbourne side now. Love it, it looks like. It slid right into the fence. But the way he's playing, when you're playing like that, you'd have to be dead to come off. Murphy slides in there, tries to tap the ball forward. Williams gets it through it to Morwood. Morwood offloaded. David Murphy there again. Healy and Williams. Williams kicks the ball off the ground. And Greg Williams puts it through for a desperation goal. 12-15-87, 7-7-49, the Sydney Swans. And that was sheer desperation, that by Greg Williams. What's in the pack? As he charged through, kicked it off the ground. He's got plenty of determination, Greg Williams, and been in a few old occasions today. He's a very, very good player, Greg Williams. Back to the centre with big John Ironmonger. They need a couple of goals, and they need them badly. There's Ironmonger against Steins. Little Steve right out to Healy. Here they come again. Healy with a booming kick. A great kick. And ducking back was Danny Hughes. It was going through for a behind anyway, but Healy showing what enormous skill he has got on that occasion. That point takes Sydney on to 7-8. Melbourne on 12-15 as the ball is brought back to half-back. Oh, here they come again. Ricky Jackson, beautifully out wide. Flower against Carter. Rod Carter, oh, loses it to Flower. And here they come again. Warren Dean's got an open goal. He runs to 40 metres. And it's a shocking kick. And it's out of bounds on the full. Yes, he had every opportunity there. Completely clear. But, well, you can't get them all. As Tony Moore comes off the ground and Paul Hawke back on the ground. First time since early in the first quarter. Eichel tried to tap it forward. Williams couldn't kick it off the ground. Dean comes out with a ball for Melbourne. Swings onto the left foot and drives it towards centre half forward. Campbell takes the mark. Getting away from Bernard Tui. And so Tony Campbell will be kicking from 40 metres out on replay. Warren Dean floats the ball forward. And a nice mark for Tony Campbell. Campbell from 40 metres, there's a kick, and no doubt about it, it's another one. A good camera shot from behind the goals, 13-15 to 7-8, and they're doing it well. And in desperation, this isn't going to help them, I don't think. Coleman's gone to centre-half back, and Big Hen with the centre-half forward. I'd have Morwood on the ground, I think I'd have Coleman off, Bob, under these conditions. I don't think it's going to help them anyways. You see the mark taken by... Campbell, a strong mark in front of Bernard Tui, but at the moment they're being thoroughly outplayed. 43 points of difference, a very fine effort this by the Melbourne side. Greg Williams, he won't give up. Hurry kick to Hawke, who was grabbed high, and Paul Hawke in the centre of the ground. Now, can they score a couple of quick goals? Over to Steve Wright. Their forward line has really been non-existent today. There's Dennis Carroll from behind. Great punch away to Bailey to Steins, Ian Roberts will lead Steins in the race for the ball, he'll try and keep it in play, back it comes to half forward, Craig Holden, Sean White drops the mark, it gets in a quick hand pass, stretch, allows his teammate, is that Lovett, to bring it back towards centre wing, Coleman knocks it on, all kicked off the ground by Steins, Good play, Ironmonger, to Browning. Browning to half forward at Melbourne defence. Too strong, and again, they take it away. But here's Bolton to Williams. Here's a big chance for the Swans. Over to Bolton. Oh, great play by Lovett to run him down. Beautiful play. Danny Hughes, tremendous defence by Melbourne. Centre of the ground. The Swans are trying hard, but Melbourne too good. Dean out to Eichold, Eichold to full forward, Neil Cordy has it punched away, Campbell still got it, off the ground, goal, tremendous goal. Two goals to Tony Campbell, and that one coming out of defence with a great piece of play by Brett Lovett, which set things up for Melbourne, Eichold also in the thick of things, taking that long hand pass from Dean, and the replay sees Eichold put the ball forward, Neil Cordy couldn't take the mark. Tony Campbell comes through, forces the ball forward, and then finishes up kicking it off the ground for a great goal.
49 points the lead held by Melbourne 99 to 50 Sun breaking through at the moment maybe that'll give the Sydney boys a lift as Stevie Wright takes the mark but they need help from somewhere I don't know where it's going to come from up to full forward the kick by Wright Sean White over the top to David Murphy he's caught been a very quiet player a knock on oh they can do no wrong Melbourne Danny Hughes the half back and the ball falls into the hands of Paul Hawke so Hawke who's spent a lot of time off the ground Paul Hawke Mark Bays has been spent most of the time on the interchange bench Tony Moorwood's there now as Hawke goes backwards across the ground nothing gained by that at all he must like Glenn Coleman well, I mean, he's hardly had a touch. Why would he still be on the ground, Glenn Coleman? I, I don't want to be unkind, but under these conditions, you've got to have smaller players out there when it's slippery. There's a magnificent-looking kick by Browning. And, uh, well, they've been, in all fairness, they've been thoroughly outplayed. Now, uh, Big Wayne Henwood's off the ground and Bays is back on. So, I think he's a bit non-plus, Tommy. He wouldn't... They've been thoroughly outplayed. It's not easy to coach when you're getting thrashed. There's the kick by Hughes. The half-back. Bolton is there for the Swans. He's got it. Play on, said the umpire. Williams is attacked from behind by uh, Spalding. Off the ground it goes by Big Ironmonger. Grabbed by Greg Williams. Now a big chance for Dennis Carroll. He's got the bounce of it. He hooks it back. It bounces. Sean White. Oh, brilliant diving attempt by Sean White and taps it through for a point. And do the crowd love him? And so they should because that's the sort of thing... Look at that desperation. That's magnificent football by Sean White. Great play. Off the hands of the pack. The loose ball comes very close to the boundary line. And a free kick has been found. Pushing the back going away of the Melbourne winger, Graham Yates. Yates hand passes on to Newport. Newport's kick smothered by Stevie Wright. Over the boundary line it comes. A throwing to take place on centre wing. Freeze 24 to 15 in favour of the Swans. They need a bit more than that. 52 to 99. Bailey couldn't quite take it. Greg Williams forces the ball forward. Stevie Wright picks the ball up. Floats it towards half forward line. Earl Spaulding came in to punch it away from Melbourne. It's Brett Bailey who gets a hand pass to Newport. Newport's kick off the side of the boot. Stretch came in, tapped it well, ball forward. Mitchell gets the hand pass to Hawke. The short kick across the ground, straight to Browning. Browning thought about the hand pass. Now he goes short onto Holden, and that player takes the mark with the second grab. Jimmy just going around in circles, so and getting nowhere. Now they're a chance. But, oh, geez, played a good game. Love it. She goes in after it again. Backing him up is Sean White. And he kicks it out long to the boundary line. In fact, he puts it over the line on deep on that half-forward flank. Now, Craig Holden will take the kick. Time clock is just ticking away. 18 and a half minutes gone. Short pass comes to Healy. Newport's had the job on Healy for the last couple of quarters. He's only kicked one goal. And he's, you know, don't forget here, they're hooting him. He was the hero here a few years ago from Melbourne he's had 11 kicks and three handballs a great player Jared Healy I, getting over a stress fracture of the foot of course you saw that ankle heavily taped there under that right sock and last week he kicked very poorly I'm sure it was because of that injury Jared Healy right on the boundary line just the sort of player who might kick this is a magnificent kick normally it's very very close in fact it's a great goal Two goals to Gerard Healy and the Swans 8 10 58, Melbourne 14 15 99. So 41 points. Now the lead by Melbourne. We're approaching the 20 minute mark of the third term. As we said in the second quarter, the Swans, if they are to be in there with a chance, must kick the next goal. Gerard Healy stats. Ironmonger got the tap wide. Stevie Wright comes through. The hand pass accepted by Browning. Well smothered by Steins. Flower and Flower that was. Allowed the ball to come forward. Steins puts a long kick down. And a great effort to mark by Campbell. Couldn't do so. O'Dwyer right there. Snapped towards goal by Warren Dean. Is offline so far in fact that it's out of bounds on the full. But nonetheless, Melbourne still down there attacking 
and Dean has been a dangerous half forward said a number of times this year that if the same man was responsible for recruiting Earl Spall, Warren Dean and Todd Viney in the same year what a success story the three of them, all great players from Melbourne as the loose ball comes forward Campbell taps it over the top Carter gets the hand pass in Browning waited, now gets the ball forward with the right foot kick Brett Bailey's there with Paul Hawk. Bailey taps it on to Stretch Stretch has got the loose man in Healy he'll play on the open goal looming up as Greg Healy goes towards goal. Great goal for Melbourne. Greg Healy gets his second. Well, once again, brilliant play by the Demons, starting with Bailey out right out there on the wing. It's tapped on wide to stretch. Stretch a magnificent foot pass on the left foot to Greg Healy at the 50 metre line he's got great presence of mind to just take his time, touch it on the ground open up the goal, bang and a beautiful goal to uh, Greg Healy 8-10 to 15-15 and they've got every answer for the Swans, there's Holden a wa hurry kick a wobbly one but this guy's played a tremendous game, Brett Lovett half back flank and uh, has really really done well or is in the back pocket Bob? Half Not back I think the half back, well there is uh, Williams, oh Ricky Jackson, he really has got a lot of pace. That occasion he kicks straight to Brownie, and Brownie almost kicks it backwards and straight over the line on half back flank for the Sydney Swans, half forward for Melbourne. Two he's off, Warwood back on. Well, I think they're pretty desperate at this stage. 22 minutes gone, third quarter, and uh, well, it looks like they're a big chance at the moment to meet Hawthorne in who the preliminary final twice. next week. Who they've beaten twice this year, once in a night game and once in a home and home. Oh, there's a great desperation by Melbourne. There's Ricky Jackson. It was great play by Stretch to smother that ball. Here's a chance for Flower. Flower with a hand pass. The ball is smothered. It's still at half forward. A hand pass out to Yates. Yates kicks it back to full forward. The bounce favours Browning and he taps it through for a point. He could have grabbed it, but he was thought he was under pressure. Well, it's the players around Browning that have to do the talking in a situation like that. Swans interchange bench. Bernard Tui putting on the dressing gown. And Neil Cordy plays on from fullback. Then goes short towards the half-back line. Great effort by Newport. And Fagan it called play on. Newport almost throws the ball away. Healy taps the ball forward. Lovett picks it up. I'm repeating myself, I know, but Lovett has been magnificent for Melbourne. Lovely pass to the big fellow in O'Dwyer. But what a game Brett Lovett has played. A former captain of Hawthorne under-19s. If he's ever played a better game, I certainly haven't seen it. But, uh, from the moment the game started, Brett Lovett has been superb. Stephen O'Dwyer, recruited from St Bernard's in the amateurs. O'Dwyer out suspended last week. The kick from O'Dwyer through for one point. Like a true ruckman. Well, he's been, uh, he and Jim Steins have had extensive ruck coaching this year by former Hawthorne great Don Scott, of course. And, uh, well, he's certainly done wonders, Don Scott, with those ruckmen. Peter Moore, in fact, the Bellamy Millers can't get a game at the moment with the Melbourne side. I think Scotty Bob might have uh, also showed him how to kick after that one. There's the kick coming down towards centre wing. Up they go. It's punched away to Mitchell. Mitchell hooks it back to half forward where Danny Hughes, the ever-reliable Danny Hughes, is always there doing the hard things, the contesting. Jod Northey must be a really, really happy man at the moment to be coaching a team of goers like this. No doubt about that, Pete. And you've summed it up. A team of goers right over the ground as Paul Hawke takes possession. Hooks them all forward. Williams couldn't take possession. Holden, but beautifully tackled by Stephen Stretch, who in tackling tapped the ball out of Holden's hands and the ball went over the boundary line. Just another example, as we see on replay. Now, there it was. He thumped the ball out of the hands. Beautiful defensive work by the Demons. Murphy gets it to Scott. Brett Scott with a long kick towards the forward area, but he's offline. And so Brett Scott has kicked the one goal, one out of eight goals, 11. But it's 32 scoring shots to 19, 107 to 59. Melbourne completely holding sway and deservedly so. 
clapping is for O'Dwyer coming off the ground and Williams back onto the ground for Melbourne as the ball goes over the boundary line. Just a little bit further away from the Swans goal than half forward. And they are in dire straits. 48 points the margin. And they've only kicked 59 points so far as Greg Williams traps it. Try to get the hand past to Mitchell. Free kick must go the way of Barry Mitchell. And the little battler from Mulgrave. With the aid of a 15 metre penalty. It's a decent 15 <laughs> metres to say, too. It's about 30. I wouldn't mind buying some land off Peter Cameron. Off the hands of the pack. Doug Coop first there and he's happy to see it run through for one rush point to the Swans. Well, Doug Coop would be wrapped to be part of this side. He's been round the football merry-go-round. I think North Melbourne, he was a former South Melbourne he player, was. wasn't he, Bob? So, uh, at his third league club and he would be delighted. There he is, the player I mentioned, Doug Coop on screen towards centre wing. Ian Roberts. To half forward. Oh, Spalding, gee. I don't know, I'm pretty sure the Eagles could have recruited Spalding and uh, Warren Dean. I'll tell you what, I reckon they've made a big blue with both of them. As we see Earl Spalding take a strong mark. They could have done with the centre-half back to the oh, Eagles Mel this year. Melbourne may have already got them beforehand. Oh, I got the mail, I could have got them, Bob, I think. Well, you get better mail than I do. <laughs> As Sean White takes a lovely mark. Maybe a little bit foolishly playing on, but... This man can do no wrong, Brett Lovett, as he hooks the ball back in towards the centre. Bailey brought it down. Yates gives support, drives the ball forward. At the back, it's Williams. He hand passes to Jackson. A goal coming up is from... No, he's missed it! No, it's a goal! Well, once again, fantastic teamwork from Melbourne. Look at the Melbourne supporters. They're wrapped. Bailey, strong work. Gates, hurry, kick up towards the forward line. It's grabbed by Williams. A beautiful 30-metre hand pass. We thought he might have missed it, Ricky Jackson. Oh, no, it was well in. We've got up by Puttis off running across. And a lovely goal for the little rover. They're far too good, Melbourne. Yes, they are. Playing superb football. They fully deserve their lead. Well, Ricky Jackson, gee, he'd be delighted. He was discarded by the Richmond club and now he's a vital part of this Melbourne machine at the moment and that's how they're playing. At half-back, they can't do a thing wrong. At the moment, they look like meeting Hawthorne in the pre preliminary final at BFL Park next week. What a game that'll be. Rod Carter, strong mark. Centre-half-back, I wonder if Rod will be settling up next year for the Swans. Oh, look at that for desperation. That's holding the ball almost. Yes, there's no and doubt it was holding the ball. And Peter Cameron... That was certainly holding the ball. Well, and Peter Cameron not playing. Let's have a look at it again. The desperation. Murphy, look at the desperation by Ricky Jackson. He's lying well, he on it. He wasn't actually tackled, though. No, no, I think he was right, Peter Cameron, as the ball was kicked away by Coleman. It's at half Hawk and Browning. Oh, gee, look at the pressure. Tremendous play. Spalding to Steins. It's still almost in the centre of the ground as the Melbourne players pounce on it. They're not going to let that ball go loose and they want to really swap the Swans. Peter Cameron and David Howell at the umpires have done a fair job. They didn't do well early, but in the last quarter or so, they've done pretty well. 28 and three-quarter minutes gone in the third quarter and it looks like it might be the end for the Swans. Ricky Jackson dummies beautifully. The hand pass towards Viney. He gets away with it. Hand passes to Yates. This will be a goal. Graham Yates, no mistake about it, went through the centre. Well, that's uh, Graham Yates' second goal, and it all came about once again by magnificent teamwork by the Melbourne side. 17 17 now they are. 119 to 8 12 60. Look at that. Ricky Jackson across to Viney. Unselfishly, he gives it to Yates. He could have kicked it himself, Viney. And Yates. A loose man, bang, and he slams it through for another one. This is delightful football, and they cannot do a thing wrong. Graham Yates, 10 kicks, 5 handballs, 15 possessions to Graham Yates, and 2 fine goals. Centre bounce, Holden. Love it once again, beautiful play by Love it. Gets it onto Healy. Touches it once on the ground and Melbourne, well, like, what more can they do? They have been superb and the former Hawk under-19 captain has led the way. They haven't got a weak link, Bob. 
for the second week in a row. No matter where you look, Melbourne are doing well. Steins gets the ball down. Coleman has the kick, smothered off the boot, and it's rushed through for one point. Exactly double the score. As look at that by Brett Bailey. And it's forced through by Bays, but great play, Bailey. Flower! What a lovely mark, Robert Flower. Do they love him, don't they? Four goals, and uh, that was a tremendous mark as Flower sets it up. Can someone take a mark? It's punched away by Coleman. Browning grabs it at half back. Oh, he took far too long to kick that, and it was under enormous pressure. And it really went nowhere, straight out of bounds in front of the Melbourne member stand. There's the siren for another brilliant exhibition of football by Melbourne in that quarter. And the members stand and all the Melbourne supporters rise to clap their heroes because it is a great exhibition of football. Melbourne at three-quarter time. Johnny Northy, they love him too. 17-18, 120 Melbourne at three-quarter time. Lead the Sydney Swans, 8-12-60. One quarter of football left to play in the first semi-final of 1987 and it'll be very, very hard to see anyone but the Melbourne Football Club going into the preliminary final against Hawthorne next week. 60 points to margin and that's all the Swans have scored in three quarters of football. Wright taps the ball on. Barry Mitchell kicks the ball forward for the Swans. Taken down there by Healy but it's smothered out there by Sean White. Again, fine defensive work, and uh, the former demon, Gerard Healy, I just wonder what's going through his mind at the moment. I was thinking exactly the same thing. I, great Melbourne player, he was Gerard Healy too, but he went to the Swans, and uh, well, he's had finals experience, now it's Melbourne's turn. There's Todd Miney, he does a lot of hard things. Browning, I wonder whether he, there's a uh, talk in the Melbourne papers this morning that he's already signed on as coaching up in the Ovens and Murray League in... Victoria for next season so maybe this is his last game for the Sydney Swans he's been a great stalwart for them if it is his last game it, he has been a fantastic player for them Mark Browning there's John Northey the quiet achiever and really he was sacked by the Sydney Swans we must remember a hand pass out to Dennis Carroll been moved away from full forward I would have done it much earlier I think there's Tony Morwood having an open goal and Tony Morwood has put it through Morwood kicks his first goal and goals have been very, very hard to come by for the Swans. Nine goals, 12, 66, 17, 18, 120. Well, when you look at their set forwards, Greg Williams has kicked the goal. He's their sentiment. Jared Healy's kicked two. He's a ruck rover. Brett Scott's kicked one. They just haven't had any forwards uh, down there, Bob. And that would be taking it away from the Melbourne defence. They have really applied pressure. And uh, Brett Lovett, Earl Spaulding, Newport after Bailey has uh, had the early job of going everywhere with Healy. Newport took over as Tommy Hafey. Well, you can't get any glummer than that as Carroll puts the ball forward. Yates is there to tap the ball on and it goes towards Danny Hughes. Hughes will take the ball over the boundary line. Hawk coming through. Well, this will be the fourth finals appearance in two years by the Swans. And they, uh, a, a quick exit again, Bob. Yes, and uh, it's disappointing. And I'm sure now we really have to look at the situation. Unfortunately, as the old saying goes in football, maybe they did peak too early. Then they were unfortunate to have a few injuries. And they certainly haven't looked like a fresh side with life in their legs during this final series. Well, I really thought that they'd come out and push Melbourne today. I really thought we were in for a great contest. Greg Williams has been taken out. I thought out likewise. Of, I've been taken out of it by Simon Eichel, Greg Williams. There's Danny Hughes, ever reliable. Oh, gee. Good mark. Brett Bailey across to Eichel, the player I mentioned. Further afield it comes. This is Warren Dean to half forward, and the long kick comes right up towards Steins, who flies. Couldn't take it, and it's forced over the line in that forward pocket. Yes, and Greg Healy giving the hand pass over, taking it back again. And, uh, well, he's been an excellent player also, but every Melbourne player has done his job at some stage. From the throw-in, high over the top, came Cordy, a snap towards goal. Robert Flower was up high. Carter's done a good job against Flower because Robbie Flower 
had kicked goals at that stage. Browning takes the ball. A shocking kick. Straight to the arms of Stephen Stretch, who's been a fine player on the wing. He's been a uh, wonderful acquisition, Stephen Stretch, to the Melbourne side in the last couple of seasons. He's well, a lot of votes in the Brownlow, too. Uh, he is a top player, Stretch, as he kicks from the 55 metre mark. It's close. I think it was touched through. A very, very good drop punt, though, that by Stretch. It's forced through from behind. 17 19 to 9 12, and you would have to say this is a real hiding. That is the understatement of the year. Official attendance here today, 80,292. And uh, most of them are absolutely delighted with Melbourne's performance. Bailey takes it from Greg Healy. The kick from Browning, tapped on by Coleman. Murphy puts the ball down towards half forward, but Tony Moore with a mile behind Sean White. White puts the short pass in. It's a shocker. Coleman takes the mark, but he's... Doesn't know which way to go. Now he drives it towards centre half forward. High shoulder in front is beaten foot by Greg Williams. He's got Tony Morwood down the ground. Morwood at the back, up high, a lovely mark. So Tony Morwood, well, that's the time the players get caught out. Sean White left Morwood, did everything right. And now it comes back and Tony Morwood takes the mark. Yes, no doubt about that mark and uh, well, He's been on and off the ground today, Tony Morwood, and that's why three kicks and three handballs. He's been one of that forward line that has played poorly. There's the kick, and it's another goal. Morwood kicking his second goal, in fact, second for the quarter. And so, probably for the only time in this game, uh, although in the very even first term when the Swans led by five points, and at quarter time, it looked like being an excellent game. Only five points the margin between the sides, but since then, it's been a cakewalk for the Demons. 72 to 121. O'Dwyer gets the tap. Williams is dispossessed by Eichold, who's played an excellent game. Spalding takes it on to stretch. He bursts through the centre and puts a lovely kick down to the forward area. Touched up the hands. Bays comes through, pushes it over the line, and Melbourne get their fifth rush point, but they have been great. 72 to 122, a lead of 50 points. Just over the six-minute mark final quarter. I think it's most important for the Sydney Swans to salvage a bit of pride by fighting this game right out. And I think they are doing that at the moment. Craig Holden, the 50-metre line, he's on half back. Brings it to the wing. Coleman couldn't take the mark. David Murphy's in there as the rain tumbles down again. And, uh, well, that adds an insult to injury as we see Stephen Wright going for the long kick and the umpire, Peter Cameron, did he say he ran too far? Yes. He's at the judgment. A little bit stiff, but look at the rain coming down and uh, I think that certainly ends uh, the Swans' hopes, whatever hope they did have, and I really do believe they didn't have much at all. We see the ball with Greg Healy on half-back flank. Kicks it towards half-forward. It's fisted away to right. Back to Carter. To half-forward. Punched away. That was by Coop. Again, the Demons get out of defence. And the mark has been taken on centre wing by Stephen Newport. So Newport from centre wing towards centre half-forward. Punched away by Carroll. Taken by Bailey of Melbourne. And Brett Bailey puts the ball high in the air. Stein's in front. Cordy punches the ball away. Bays puts it to the ground. Jackson takes it well. Shows a good turn of speed. A lovely hand pass to Yates who snaps towards goal. But he's offline. One point the result. So Graham Yates has kicked two goals. One out of Melbourne's 17-21. And it's 100, 123 points to 72. Browning plays on from fullback. A poor kick from Browning. Missed that time by Flower, but once again, he gets great support, and the Demons go forward as it was kicked that time by Newport. Kicked off the ground by Stevie Wright. Over the boundary line it goes as Stephen O'Dwyer comes off the ground. Williams back on the ground for Melbourne. What a great display of football by the Demons. Steins grabs it, puts it forward. Bay slips. Williams comes through the hand pass to Bayes. He's kicked a high, floating one towards the centre and stretch a beautiful mark. 
Well, that was just sheer ability and class. Took that mark. Tremendous. Oh, this is bad play by the Sydney Swans because Stephen Stretch is a magnificent kick of a football, and that 15 metres now takes him right onto the 50 metre line. He will kick this drop punt from 16 kicks he's had. And as I said, he is a great kick. There's the drop punt, a low trajectory drop punt goal. Lovely goal by Stephen Stretch with the aid of a 15 metre penalty. Stretch put his second goal on the board and he's controlled that wing right throughout the game. But as we've said a number of times, no matter what position you would like to name, you can make the same comment. An absolute team. And I'm, next week will be a sensational game because Hawthorne and, uh, play a similar style of game. They're a team and so are Melbourne. We're in for a classic contest. Greg Williams overruns the ball. Bolton gains it. Hooks it down towards the half-forward line. But it's Melbourne in the way and big Jim Steins. Steins plays on. Would have had a 15-metre penalty. He doesn't even worry about that. And that's why, because he drove the ball forward. And one of the best players on the ground for mine, Simon Eichel. Tremendous game. The former Orman Amateurs boy, and he was a late replacement in the side for Russell Richards. He goes to the pocket, and Tony Campbell chips in to take a safe mark on his chest, about 20 metres out from goal. They're doing it well. 18-21 to 10-12 at the moment, and a chance for another goal. He's kicked to this Eichel, kicking long to the pocket. Great judgment there, but oh, no pressure by Mark Bays whatsoever. There's the kick by Campbell, and what's he done with it? He's dobbed it. Three goals to Tony Campbell, and uh, well, I don't think it's too many weeks ago that nobody could have imagined Tony Campbell representing Melbourne in a finals game. He's come into the side and he's done the job well. And I think uh, that uh, at the moment he's there to stay. Tony Campbell stats. Centre bounce. Steins gets the ball forward once again. Browning gains it. Well tackled by Viney. And the loose ball comes about. Bolton comes out with it. Runs straight into a Melbourne tackle. Dean now. The ball forced forward to Bailey. On to Steins. Steins to Flower. Flower, a shocking kick, but well, excuse Robbie Flower there. I think Flower really tried to chip that across to his teammate then, Bob. I reckon he went for a little pass and just kicked it a little bit over his head. Bays off, Iron Munger on. Well, Mark Bays has played a very poor game. I think uh, a lot of rumours going around. He may not be in Sydney next year. He might be playing in Melbourne, but, uh, well, we'll wait and see on that one. But it's on half-back for the Swans. And it's been a magnificent exhibition, this by Melbourne. 72 handballs to the Sydney Swans, 69. And it will be interesting over the summer to see the, what happens with the Sydney Swans lineup. There's Mark. Has not had a good day, Mark Bays. But I'll tell you what, he's not Robinson Crusoe there. He's had a few mates. He's had very few good players, Bob. Yes, I can only concur with that remark, Pete. In a very, very disappointing uh, last few weeks of the year for the Swans. In fact, for memory, I think they've lost six out of seven. They lost three of their last... Well, five out of uh, six anyway, because they lost three of their last four games and uh, have lost their two final games as Lovett once again takes it. It was a poor kick from Bolton. Lovett puts the ball wide. Lovett Flower... 40 metres out from goal, puts it forward, across the face of goal it comes, and through for one point, kicked by Robert Flower, who has four goals, four on the board, out of Melbourne's 10 goals, 12. 72 to 136, as John Northey has a close look at the situation, not much expression on the face, but I can be, assure you, within, he'll be absolutely delighted with the performance by his team, and so he should be. You just wonder how long, Bob, as we see uh, Barry Mitchell getting it down to centre wing, how long can they keep this sensational form up? Two more weeks they've got, and they've got a premiership if they're good enough there. Danny Hughes, Iron Munger, doesn't get many kicks, does a lot of knocking on. Paul Hawk, a bad kick goes straight to Graham Yates. Yates courageously took that mark. He didn't know what was coming from behind him then. He copped one. 
Oh, towards half forward he goes. Craig Holden, caught. Players charge in after the slippery ball now, as after a... Well, in fact, it's still raining at the moment, a light shower. And there's a very, very glum look on the face of Tommy Hape. He's had a lot of uh, success as a coach with Richmond. He's had some heartbreak at this ground with Collingwood, of course. And now also with the Sydney Swans. Coming off is Coleman and coming back on his base. Peter McKinnon. It's a little bit late. Is that one as that one's concerned? Campbell almost took a great mark. Look at the crowd. They're not happy about that. They're all for the demons and they're letting up by a howl at know what they think as the Swans put the ball forward towards centre wing. Williams is there. Gets the hand pass across to Healy from centre wing. Healy goes towards half forward and Tony Morwood takes a nice mark. Gives it across to Bays. Bays will put the long kick down the ground. It won't be straight. Can Stevie Wright gain possession? He cannot. And it's through for one point. Kick by Mark Bays. 73 to 136. 15 minutes approaching. So approximately 12 or 13 minutes to play. And what more can this guy do? Oh, he Steven is. Stretch has been superb. Another lovely mark. Now he puts the ball wide for Jim Steins. Has all the time in the world to take it. Ironmonger chase smothered. Robert Flower first on the scene. Tried to tap it back to Steins. Carter intercepts and picks the ball up. Hand passes over the top to Bolton. Bolton now hooks it towards half forward. Spalding's in the way. Can't quite take the mark. Almost a collision of swans. And love it now. On to Newport. Newport puts the ball forward. Finds his teammate in Bailey. Hand pass over the top time. Finds Viney. Viney straightens up. The hand pass towards Healy. Can he get the kick in? He does. Goes Goldwood. And Greg Healy brings up his third goal. Well, tremendous play again. What great play that was from the back line. Sheer teamwork, desperation. Look at the desperation of Todd Viney. It started further afield, though, and a long hand pass allows Greg Healy to grab it. What a nice bounce. Bang and shoots a goal. Beautiful teamwork, but it started further afield on the back line. Well, this has been a tremendous performance. Uh, 20-22 to 10-13, nearly double the score, and I think they've been twice as good. You'd have to say that. Bob? No doubt about it, uh, Pete. Since quarter time, Melbourne had kicked three goals, three in the second, uh, to the Swans, 8-9 to Melbourne in the second quarter, 2-6 to 7-5 by the Demons in that third term and Melbourne have just continued to go on their married way. They led by 60 points at three-quarter time, and at the present moment, it's 69 points. So the Swans just getting further and further down the drain as Danny Hughes now, a long kick. What a lovely kick, Hughes. It's, it's a delight to see the Melbourne players with their long kicking and driving it right out of the danger zone each time. Kicked off the ground by Mitchell. White tried to tap the ball back. Support coming from Lovett. The hand pass out, and Stephen Stretch once again goes towards the forward area. He's kicks off line, but it's pretty rare that that happens today. Coleman puts the ball forward. Holden gets it onto Bays. Bays un in in under pressure, just taps it out. It goes straight to the opposition. Yates puts it onto Coop. Coop dispossessed, but Yates is there to lend support again. Off the side of the boot it goes, but Melbourne's still in the van. Bays comes through to try and make amends. Gets it to Carter. Carter now on to Brett Scott. Scott pressured by Ricky Jackson and the kick goes astray. Marked by Sean White. Well, that forward line has been thrashed. And that strong Melbourne defence. He hasn't been dominant today, but he's been a very good team player, Sean White. He hasn't been as brilliant as last week. There's Steins, the Irishman. He marks on centre wing, big Jimmy Steins. And uh, he's already kicked the goal. He a and very a... underrated player, Pete. Yes, he uh, moves very, very well for a big boat. There's Warren Dean, the former Subiaco star. Dennis Carroll. Just wonder how fit Dennis Carroll's been in recent weeks. Just not like the normal brilliant Dennis Carroll. There's Craig Holden. A high floater to the pocket. And another safe mark. And uh, <laughs> David 
is he going to take it off him or not? I think he's just giving him a warning. Steve Wright tried to con the umpire, get a free kick. Sean White slips over. Off he goes. A shocking kick. He hasn't kicked well tonight, today I should say. Straight to Bolton. Bolton the high one. Tony Morwood from behind. It's fisted away though. You could be excused for saying night because the lights are on. That's and it's right. quite dark here. No, but uh, great to have the lights here at the MCG as Bailey gives it across to Healy. Another hand pass finds Viney. Likewise, the piece of play comes down to Dean. And Warren Dean hooks the ball down towards the forward area. Good attempt there to mark almost by Tony Campbell, but it was a little bit high for him. Over the boundary line it goes. It's on back behind play as the Melbourne bench. And he looks like he's got a pretty fair shiner there, Brian Wilson. Well, he got that knock very early in the game. It has not cheekbone reappeared. Cheekbone didn't look too good at all, actually. No, I hope that's not a broken cheekbone and puts him out for the rest of the finals. Mitchell hooks the ball down towards halfback and the sliding mark taken there by the Swan skipper in Dennis Carroll. 73 to 142, 69 points the margin as Big Jim Steins is up to take the mark once again. On he goes. Great play, Steins, towards half forward. Couldn't be picked up by Williams. Ironmonger does. Gets it to Cordy. Too long, according to the umpire. And uh, I think he called play on. Uh, but I think he didn't then change his mind. He's going to bring it back, and the kick will be taken down there by David Williams. Well, I don't think it matters anyway, no. because Melbourne have been superb. Yates. And it's back as Danny Hughes gives the ball to David Williams, who has not kicked a goal yet today. From 55 metres out, Williams goes goalward. It might be through! Goal to Williams, and that's just put the sealer on things. Well, look at that. 21-22 to 10-13, and now it is over. Over double the score of the Sydney Swans. Lovely kick by David Williams. Hasn't, uh, hasn't done a lot today. He's been on and off the ground. And the crowd a... is about to erupt as Robert Flower is coming off. Oh. Stephen O'Dwyer back onto the ground. The applause from the crowd as Robert Flower is taken off the ground. O'Dwyer onto the ground. Steins puts the ball forward. Yates with a hand pass out to White. White with a long kick towards centre wing. Williams left, then right. Puts the ball up towards the half forward line. A push in the back matters not because Warren Dean takes it. Plays on. A nice left foot kick towards half forward. The loose ball comes down and we find the Swans through David Murphy taking the ball out. He finds Bays in the centre of the ground. No pressure at all. This is how Mark Bays likes it. He runs long towards the forward area, but it's straight to the opposition. Danny Hughes is there. The hand pass to Sean White. White puts the ball up towards centre wing and Stephen Stretch, who's been magnificent. Ah, uh, Stretch has been magnificent. Bobby, I'll tell you how well they've played. This is the highest score that they have had in a, in a semi-final since 1946 against Footscray when they kicked 17 goals, 18. They've had great sides in that time and now they've kicked 21-22 as Viney has been magnificent. Over it goes to Yates. Yates a wide pass, but it doesn't matter because he's on his own, Spalding. Earl Spalding coming down from centre back, gets onto the left foot, he kicks it long, but there's only one man there, and it's the Swans captain, Dennis Carroll, who started the game at full forward. He goes across to Browning. Browning with a long raking kick looking for Bolton. Gee, they've been disappointing the Swans. They've hardly had a good player. Bolton loses it to his teammate. In fact, oh gee, off the side of the boot, that was Craig Holden. Now was it out in the full? I think it was a throw-in. Throw-in to take place on centre wing. Robert Flower having a look at the situation. And how would Robert Flower feel? Five weeks ago, thinking he was going to finish his career with not a finals match to his uh, long, illustrious career. And now he's got a minimum of three, maybe even four. It's a fairy tale uh, story, this with Robert Flower. And, uh, well, he's had plenty of press in Melbourne, rightly so. He's been a great champion for Melbourne. Tapped on again. Bailey putting on pressure, but Browning picks the ball up for the Swans. Drives it long. Nobody home again. 
and what a disgraceful forward line it has been for the Swans. But what a magnificent back line for the Demons. And I think the other thing about Flower, as you see the Melbourne lead 75 points, is his great loyalty to the Melbourne club. He's had many big money offers to go to other clubs and he has resisted them to stay with Melbourne. Yes, there's no doubt that Melbourne have looked after Robert Flower to keep him there, but justly so, and it's been just reward that Robert Flower has already seen out two successful finals, and he's been an inspiration of the Melbourne Football Club, but it's been a team, and John Northey also there, a great inspiration, and of course, uh, he'd feel great at the moment. He was coach of the Sydney Swans, but uh, wasn't required, and... It, well, there were some people who did want sacked. to see him go on, but uh, nonetheless, he is coach of Melbourne, and what a great job he's done. He didn't have enough flair, was the comment, wasn't it? Well, that was what uh, was written, but whether or not that was uh, actually it. Nonetheless, I don't think John Northey would be too concerned at the moment. All he'd be worried about is just what they get with time on almost left to play. The best man on the ground for mine, and Brett Lovett. Drives the ball forward, and, uh, well, he's had 19 great mates. Doug Coop accepts it from Newport. Coop's kick up towards the forward area. Bailey takes it on to Warren Dean. Dean goes goalward. He's hooked it. And, uh, well... I'll tell you what, he needs some kicking coaching, that uh, Warren Dean. He hooks every kick he has, he hooks. Right to left, like a golf shot. He'd get into trouble on a golf course, Bobby. Being Maybe the it's threes. just as well for the Swans. I know, because he does kick a lot of behinds, so, though. I don't think next week against Hawthorne he won't want to miss him. Uh, Hawthorne will put him under enormous pressure. There is Viney to Dean. He'll probably kick this on the left foot. No, he tries to centre it and do the team thing. That was good football. Ricky Jackson caught. Gets in the hand pass. Rod Carter. I wonder if this is his last game. I think he'll probably saddle up again next year, Rod. It's Viney. Oh, he's marked. <laughs> I don't, think he, I don't think he was sure whether the umpire had called play on or not then, but he's taken this at the 50-metre line, a disconsolate-looking Greg Williams on the mark. There he is, the Brownlow medalist. Kicks it across, Viney. I think that was actually meant for Newport. I think it, it just shows the dominance of Melbourne at the moment. The two players it there. It went over the head of Newport, and uh, then Greg Healy took an easy mark. Now... Greg Healy with 22 possessions so far has kicked three goals, one out of Melbourne's 21-23. As a little close to the man on the mark, but it's a nice looking kick. Punched away, taken there by Roberts. Healy accepts the hand pass. Robert Flower back onto the ground for Melbourne as Warren Dean comes off. And Melbourne, well, the fans are delighted. Hopefully for Melbourne, Warren Dean is OK. Melbourne's greatest winning margin in a first semi-final, 30 points against North Melbourne in 1954. But today, it's already 76 points. Yates, again, gets the short kick forward. The hand pass comes out and Big O'Dwyer drives it up towards Steins. It runs past him. Over the boundary line it goes. And so a throw-in to take place alongside the behind post a disconsonant looking Wayne Henwood 27 minutes have gone throwing in the forward pocket Ironmonger gets the ball down Roberts is dispossessed Gerard Healy puts the ball forward for the Swans Bolton along with Doug Coop Coop happy to see it over the boundary line the throw in on the half forward line for Melbourne with Melbourne on 149 points leading the Swans 73 well, Robbie Flower is back on the ground because Warren Dean, I think he took a bit of a heavy knock and they've taken him off as a precautionary measure and he got the accolades of Flower. Normally gets as he went down the boundary line. Here come the Swans. But, gee, they've had uh, some poor players. Their forward line has absolutely been non-existent. And, uh, well, they've hardly had a good player all day. In fact, I don't think Tom Hapey would be very impressed by a few of the efforts today. There's Bays doing the ruck work. Tony Campbell, beautiful long hand pass to Sean White. Onto the left foot he goes, he hooks it towards a David Murphy. He's had a very quiet day. Oh, good strong play. He is a top player, Stephen Stretz. That was magnificent play. Newport was linked, or was it Bailey? 
and uh, in fact it was new port but play on now said the umpire is David Murphy on center wing kicks it wide looking for Brownie I'm sure this will be his last game for the Swans there's Sean White taking it to the line no it's still in play I think Mark Browning would have been quite happy to see it go over but eventually it, it is just forced. shows you never stop until it That's is right. over. at full stop you watch this look as, at, uh, look at White he got there he goes again before Mark Browning and over the line brilliant play Sean White indicative of the performance of the Demons Danny Hughes with the length of the kick of Hughes getting it right out of the danger zone Brett Bailey forces the ball forward goes after it again kicks it off the ground it's intercepted down there by Cordy Cordy's hand pass coming out towards Bolton Bolton has time to steady puts it up towards the forward area off the hands of the pack Melbourne's there final siren as Hughes got it across to Healy and the final scores 10 13 73 Swans Melbourne 21 23 149 as Robert Flower comes off the ground well done again Robert Flower John Northey and the Melbourne Football Club well a magnificent performance that by the Demons let's uh, not take it away from them they did not have a weak link right from the back line where love it young fella discarded by Hawthorne set the example but they had good players everywhere Stephen Stretch was absolutely brilliant their forward line, well, they just took it right away from that Swans defence. The Swans were very, very down in all the parts of the game. And uh, a brilliant performance this by Melbourne and set up a classic contest next week at BFL Park Waverley between Hawthorne, who have been the favourites for the flag, and this up-and-coming demon side who have already beaten Hawthorne twice this year, once in a night game and once in a day game. Well, Melbourne trailed by five points at quarter time, but that was the only time that the Swans ever really looked in the hunt. At half time, it was 31 points to Melbourne, 60 points at three quarter time, and 76 points at the finish with a great performance by Melbourne. Three goals, three to the Swans in the first quarter, while Melbourne kicked two goals, four. Then we saw the Swans completely fall apart they only added three goals three to eight goals nine in the second quarter seven goals five to the demons to two goals six in the third quarter and then in the final term when they were all tired both teams were tired it was four goals five to melbourne two goals one to the swans a great team performance all over the ground john northy can justly be proud of a magnificent team performance by the demons and uh, well, I thought the best player on the ground was Brett Lovett. I agree. Who played superbly in the half-back flank. He was probably closely to uh, by Stephen Stretch. And uh, well, it's very hard at this stage to uh, think of anyone but the, possibly the whole side of the Melbourne Football Club. It wouldn't matter who you pick. Well, I think, Bob, now the question's got to be asked. Are they good enough to go the whole hog and go all the way through? I, I mean, they've only got two more games to go. And if they keep this form up, they're a big chance to beat Hall on next week then they'd meet the demons in the grand final uh, the blues in the grand final and who knows what could happen then but it's added tremendous interest to this final series it certainly has pete a wonderful performance by melbourne to run out winners 21 23 149 sydney swans 10 13 73